Greetings to one and all. And once again, unfortunately, this week we have to gather in isolation from one another, separated but only by distance, united in our belief in Jesus Christ. Today we come and we recognize Pentecost Sunday, Sunday where we, we lift up the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit's action upon our lives. Today we also acknowledge our high school graduates. We're gonna lift them up. And I would wanna lift up not just the high school graduates, but also all the students, all the teachers. It's been a, a difficult uh, school year this year. And that comes to an end or came to an end this past Friday. And so we just wanna to lift them all up as well. So we gather, we gather to worship the Lord our God. And so let us prepare to do so. come together at different times in different places hear the words of the psalmist may god be gracious to us and bless us and may god's face shine upon us that his way may be known upon earth god's saving power among all nations let the peoples praise you O god let all the peoples praise you let the nations be glad and sing for joy for God judges the peoples with equity and guides the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Come, let us worship. before us. Words put together by early believers as they wrestled to understand a living God who loves us unconditionally. The words are found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. In our lives, our communities, and in the world, there can be many troubling things, many things that bring and try and instill fear within us. May they not overwhelm us. In our current state of separation from one another, may we hold tight to the words from Jesus. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Call someone today. Share the peace of Christ with them. Today we recognize our high school seniors. Alyssa Farron, Claire Schreckengast, Claudia Smith, Kenzie Luckett, and Kyra Panar. This wasn't the way we planned to celebrate with you. This wasn't what you had envisioned for your last few months of high school. But this time of separation doesn't lessen your achievements. It doesn't diminish our desire to honor you. We want to lift you up, sharing in the joy of what God has done in your life. Look back and be proud. Be proud of what you have achieved and look forward to what God has planned for you. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Hold on to those words as you take the next steps toward your dreams. May God's graces go with you. Before our first scripture reading, let us pray. Gracious and loving God, your word is a light unto our path. Guide us by your spirit that we might be obedient to your direction in our lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Now a reading from John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for the fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Great and holy God, God of yesterday, Today and tomorrow, we come humbly before you, knowing that you hear us as we call to you. We come as we are, broken people in a broken world, in awe that you would simply be mindful of us. Give us strength and courage, Lord, to turn from the ways of the world. As we live our lives, may we focus on the author and perfecter of our faith, your Son, Jesus Christ. In our brokenness, as we journey, may we be stopped short by the things that cause your heart to break, by those who cry out for help, and may we look upon those created in your image with compassion, acting upon the injustices that we see manifest all around. 
In our brokenness, may our voices ring out and our actions confront those in authority who follow the leading of the world. May we ask questions that make others think. May our own deeds convey the love that you have for this world. May we be salt, and may our light shine brightly, and to God be the glory. Lord, the pace of life seemingly grows ever faster. Our senses are bombarded constantly, and decisions take on an urgency of their own. Let your spirit dwell richly within us, and guide us, Lord, to be still and know that you are God. In our brokenness, may we go to our quiet places and simply feel your presence. May we, in stormy weather, anchor in the safe harbor that you offer, trusting in you and not in our own understanding, acknowledging you in all of our ways and allowing you to make our path straight. In the brokenness of this world, the deceit and lack of truth, the devastation and destruction, the insidiousness of disease, the stealing power of depression and addictions of people forced from their homes to maybe never return. We believe. Help our unbelief. May we not simply long for the injustices to be overturned, yearn for the beauty of creation to overwhelm the devastation. Imagine the lying lying down with the lamb, but be driven by your spirit as your adopted sons and daughters, who in ways big and small usher in glimpses of your kingdom come in the here and now. In our brokenness, we continue to pray for those impacted by the coronavirus around the world, those who step forward on the front lines, those who are fighting the virus in their bodies, those who have succumbed to it, and those who grieve. We bring all of our concerns to you in the name of Jesus Christ and join with him in saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We come to the time in the worship service that ordinarily we would bring forth our tithes and our offerings. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it. And so there is nothing that we give unto the Lord that the Lord hasn't got already. And in reality, we give in gratitude for all that God has given unto us. We, we give for the work of God's kingdom in the here and the now, that the world would be a different place, a, a better place than it currently is. And so let us now bring forth our time, our talents, our treasures, and reflect on how we give them back to the Lord. before you as always with thanksgiving and praise upon our hearts lord you accept us for who we are take the take the gifts that we bring forward to you lord use them for the work of your kingdom that in this broken world the proclamation of your son would be heard far and wide and in our own lives lord guide our hearts block out the noise of the world help us to focus upon you as we hear your word read and proclaimed this day that we would be your disciples, that we would be your witnesses, that we would proclaim your mighty acts. Through your Son's name we pray. Amen. Today we, as I've already said, recognize Pentecost, the day when the disciples were in the upper room and we can read about it in the book of Acts and the, the Spirit came upon them and then they went out into the marketplace and began to proclaim Jesus Christ. Since the resurrection, Jesus has been making appearances with the disciples. And, and as we acknowledged last week, and as we proclaimed in the Apostles' Creed, we spoke about earlier, that Jesus ascended into heaven. But when he ascended, he said to the disciples that you're going to be my witnesses. Witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the, to the very ends of the earth. But 
In order to do that, he said, you're not going to be alone. You're going to have the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so we acknowledge that today as we, as we step into uh, uh, the birth of the church, the, the beginning of the church. The question is, do we believe it today? Even as we acknowledge that the, the disciples received the Holy Spirit, do we really believe that we are spirit-driven as we live our lives today? Because just as, as much as the, as the Holy Spirit came to the disciples, it, it does come to us. And it's with us always. Paul had something to say about that in his first letter to the Corinthians. And, and we're going to read that in chapter 12, verses 3b to 13 today. And so listen to what the Spirit is telling the church this day. No one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same Spirit. There are varieties of service but the same Lord. There are varieties of activities but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given a manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit for the utterance of wisdom. To another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the works of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the discernment of spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, we were all made to drink of one Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. From the very outset, the very first words we read, no one can say Jesus is the Lord except by the Holy Spirit. That is our basic entry point into belief in Jesus Christ. And so the, the Spirit is there from the very beginning in our understanding of what it means to be a believer. And so we have to be spirit driven. Well, that was a short sermon, as if you would be so lucky. There's plenty of things that we need to take a look at in this particular scripture that lends us to the way that we live our lives in response to the fact that we are spirit driven. So let's continue. Our problem, our dilemma, is that although the Spirit is there and we are Spirit-driven, we tend to forget. We tend to, to forget that it's the Spirit who drives the things that we do. We're told that the living God is the one who, who gives us a variety of gifts, a variety of services, a variety of activities. And we are given those things in order to engage in the world as witnesses, just like the disciples were called to be the witnesses in response to the fact that we do come to believe in Jesus Christ through the Holy Spirit. This text is the one that we as a, as a church use when we're going to be sending people or commission people to go on mission trips. We have to acknowledge that we can't all as a church get up and, and go to a far off place and, and so we acknowledge that there are those amongst us who have the gifts who have the services, who have the activities to go and be involved in, in mission in different places. And so we lift them up and we commission them to do that. We have to look at the different places that we find ourselves in. How do we view the places that we find ourselves in? Are they places that we can actually witness? Or are they just part of the, the normal meandering of life, whether it be a workplace or a leisure place or, or church or going to the grocery store 
or are they all actually opportunities where because of the gifts that we have, we can proclaim Jesus Christ? You see, each and every one of us is unique. We're all unique. The Spirit gives the gifts as the Spirit deems necessary. We get involved in services, we do activities, but we all have a, a uniqueness about ourselves. The world would very much like to just completely stereotype or, or put a label on something so that you can, you can put a mass together and say, you know, this is who they are or this is who they are. And, and unfortunately, the world is very good at doing that. But that's not the way that the spirit operates. We are, each and every one of us, very unique. Dennis Fisher tells a, a story in our daily bread about a young man by the name of Wilson Bentley. Back in the, the late 1800s, Bentley was, was experimenting and, and looking at, at ice crystals, snowflakes. His mother had a, an old microscope and, and he would get them from outside and rush in and he would put them under the microscope and, and he would take a look at them and as they were there, he would try and capture the image. Of course, they melted. He could never complete the image that he wanted before he had to rush out again and, and get some more and, and focus the microscope on a, on a single flake. But he knew as he did that, that they were different. In 1885, he, he came up with the, with the idea of, of attaching a camera to his microscope. And, and so from that day forward, he didn't have to try and rush and, and copy. He could just take a picture. He spent a lot of time doing just that, 5,000 plus pictures of, of different snowflakes, and, and he never found one that was identical to another. Every one of them was unique. Brothers and sisters, we are all unique. Unique because of the Holy Spirit, who gives the gifts, who gives the services, gives the activities, the living God who, who gives that all to us. We are unique and so the places that we find ourselves in the things that we're doing are opportunities for us to proclaim who Jesus Christ is verse 7 gives us the first why why to each of us is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good for the common good we don't have the things that we're, we're given for me, myself, and I good. We don't have the things that we have given to us so that I can do anything that I want to do long as it doesn't hurt anyone else good. No, it's for the common good. Together. So that we can come together and bring the, the manifestation of all the gifts to become one body in Jesus Christ. Together, we form that body. In our individual uniqueness, our togetherness in community. Words that are, are being spoken about so very openly at this time that we are in this together, speaking about the virus that we're, that we're currently experiencing. And we are in it together. And yet as you look around the, the, the nation and you look around the world, you would wonder whether we were or not. Paul gives us a, an indication of what those gifts are in his text today, and, and it's not an exhaustive list. He talks about the spirit wisdom, he talks about knowledge, about faith, about healing, about works of miracle, of prophecy, of discernment of spirits, speaking in tongues, interpretation of tongues, A whole variety of gifts all given to us individually as as the spirit decides but for the express purpose of, of coming together as the body of Christ so that we can use those gifts together 
verse 11 goes on to say, all these are activated by one and the, the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. It's like a, you know, a, a well-oiled machine. This past Wednesday, they, they tried to, to launch the, the first manned space from the space uh, travel from the US for 10 years. If you, if you watch that and you see the preparation and you just see that we, you know, we only get to see the last few hours of that, but all the, all the time and all the intricacy of getting that, that spacecraft ready and the people ready all have a little role to play and we're, we're painfully aware of the fact that if, if one of those things doesn't work, there can be catastrophic occurrences. We all have a, a role to play. But it doesn't have to be as complicated as a, as a, a space rocket. You have two kids in a, in a playground and you have a, a plank of wood and you have a, a fulcrum there and, and they put the wood, the wood over it, it doesn't matter what it is and they can swing seesaw backwards and forwards. But you need the two pieces because if you've only got one, it doesn't seesaw. Each of us is unique. Each of us is brought together specifically so that we can be part of the one body for the express purpose of being together and proclaiming who Jesus Christ is. We're all interrelated. We are all interdependent. We need one another as the body of Christ. The world says there's all this stuff that goes on. The Spirit says there is no division. The Spirit says there is no preferential treatment. The Spirit says there is no disunity. There is no preference. There is no partiality. You see, all the, all the ills that we as a society put in place, the Spirit says no to. We're all created in the image of God and, and yet we separate by, by, by race and by color. The Spirit says no. The Spirit simply gives each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. You see, the, the world uses all those things to tear us apart. The, the Spirit says, you're unique, come together and work as one. That's the ideal. That's the direction the Spirit would pull us to. And yet we live in a, in a world where the, where the tearing apart is so prevalent as we are experiencing even now. The world is broken. The world is broken and in, in need of the unity that we can give as brothers and sisters in Christ. But that world could hear that message. We can but look upon our, our own gifts, our own services, our, our own activities and ask ourselves, are we using them for the common good? Are we using them as we are called to do so? Both as individuals but, but also as a church. Do they build others up or tear them down? Do they witness to a, a, a loving, living God as we go about living life? Brothers and sisters, the good news of the gospel is that we are spirit-driven. That we can only come to understand Jesus Christ through the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then once we have that, we, we have the Spirit giving us gifts to go out and be the witnesses that, that Jesus calls us to be. From the moment we come to believe, the Spirit's there. To the, to the moment that we leave this earthly bound, whether it's because we leave it or Christ comes back, it doesn't really matter. Everywhere in between, the Spirit is with us every moment of each and every day. And we have to remember that and not forget. 
So here's my challenge to you for this week. What can each of us do that, that reach, reaches across a divide that exists in the brokenness of this world? That we can put forth our, our gifts and our services and our activities that can overcome the world's brokenness. A world that is so desperately in need of the, of the good news that, that we can proclaim together as one in the body of Jesus Christ. What can we do this week that point others towards Jesus Christ? And all of God's people said, Amen. Sisters, 
The good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ is that he stands at the door of our hearts and he knocks. He knocks that we would open that door to him and let him in. If you would like to profess, if you would like to reprofess, or you'd like to just talk about what that means, please get in contact with me. Phone, email, text, and we can start the conversation. Brothers and sisters, from the very point that we come to believe in Jesus Christ, we are spirit driven. Spirit driven to go out and to proclaim, to not be on our own, but to have the, the living God with us as we go out and we proclaim Jesus Christ. And as we go, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, may the love of God, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you every moment of each and every day. And all of God's people said, Amen. For my brother, you're my sister, so take me by the hand again.